instruments used in this time, it's important we do some background work first. When we talk about instruments these days, we talk about the respect of families, the violin family, the brass family, etc. And it's the same when we talk about their ancestors. Another thing to remember is that when we talk about instruments in written music, we associate the range of the music to the same ranges of the human voice. The highest being soprano, and then alto, then tenor, and then bass. There are some other ranges we could talk about, but let's keep it simple for now. So with that in mind, when you think about a family of instruments, within that family, all the separate instruments tend to fit in between one specific range. The modern violin family being the perfect example. The violin is the soprano instrument and often carries the melody. Then the viola is the alto, the cello is the tenor, and the double bass is the bass. Now in the case of Renaissance instruments, that's the same. You could often play all the different ranges of an instrument in an ensemble, and that was called a consort. Then, during Elizabeth's reign, the first documented use of an ensemble with different instruments was recorded, and that's called a broken consort. Make sense? Good stuff. Let's move on. There are, of course, many, many instruments I could talk about, but I'm just going to focus on two important ones today. The viol is a family of instruments mentioned regularly. It is an ancestor of the modern violin family. There are some particular differences though to note. They normally have five or six strings, whereas the violin family has four, and they have frets on the fingerboard. Also, a violin is tuned in fifths, whereas a viol was traditionally tuned in fourths, with a major third in the middle, which was the same as the traditional tuning of the Renaissance lute. Now, the term lute is very broad. It basically only refers to any kind of plucked string instrument, fretted or unfretted, with a deep round back. The concept of the lute itself has been around since the medieval period, but what we're talking about here is the European Renaissance lute. A lute's strings are arranged in courses consisting of two strings, although often the highest course would only have one string, and the number of courses would change from one lute to another. Commonly, a Renaissance lute, often a tenor lute, used during the Elizabethan or Jacobian periods, would have six, seven or eight courses. But by the end of the Renaissance, so on up to ten, and by the end of the Baroque period, some lutes had 19 courses. Now, that's just a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? Well, not always. When you're playing polyphonic music, music with many different textures and melodies and rhythms. I guess you kind of need all the strings you can get, especially if it's only you playing, or if it's just you and a singer, and it often was. Now there's a bit of a historical dispute about whether the lute or the viol was more popular. Amateurs often played both, but these things weren't cheap. To buy the instrument itself, as well as the strings and the music, plus the tuition to play it, could set you back by quite a bit. But both remained very established instruments, both for public use and in the court. Key historical idea! The influence of the European Renaissance. Now, you may have been noticing I've been saying Renaissance instruments, as opposed to Elizabethan or Jacobian instruments. That's not only because I'm referring to the English Renaissance, which really kicked off during the later half of the 1500s, but because art-wise, what was happening in England was influenced and somewhat a reflection of the pan-European Renaissance, which had been raging since the 14th century. Now, the influence of the Renaissance on England probably is not going to be able to be explained in a small section of a video. But there is a good example here of this time of creative thinking and questioning in the instruments themselves, which have been reasonably unchanged since the medieval era. The Renaissance started to change them. The number of strings on the instruments, the shape, the textures of the sounds, what they were actually made out of, all sorts of changes occurred. However, this gave the composers of the era some challenges to deal with, since it's pretty hard to write for an instrument when it's still evolving. It is possibly because of this that there are many ensemble pieces from this time that don't have any specifications of which instrument should play which part. That brings us to the end of the video. If there are any musicians out there watching this, and you know some of the history of your instrument, feel free to put any fun historical facts down in the comments. I play the flute, and my fact is that the oldest thing they've discovered that they think is a flute is a femur of a juvenile cave bear that was found in Slovakia with two to four holes drilled into it, and it was dated to be 43,000 years old. The link to the quiz on the video, as well as the citations and references, can be found down in the description. I'm Alika, and this has been How to Party Like It's 1599. Thanks for watching.